Well, hello everyone, Doug Hansgate here. I thought I'd do another quick demo of the new things that we have going on in Lightroom, especially in the masking tools. Um, so without further ado, let me just bring up an image here and talk a little bit about this image. Um, this was done at one of my workshops, uh, my equine workshops. This happens to be a beautiful Frisian stallion. And um, so I thought I would just kind of take a look at, at what we could do with this image very quickly with the new tools and masking uh, available for in Lightroom. So what I'm gonna do is um, close this because this is the, this is that information on it. And I'm gonna just hide that panel so that we have a little more room here so people can see things a little bit easier. And let's hide this lower panel so we have kind of as much real estate as we can in the menu uh, for us to work with. So one of the things that we have available now is select subject. And if we choose select subject, it will automatically mask for our subject. If we turn the mask on, you can see that it's done a very nice job of selecting just the subject. Um, a couple little spots I might question, but let's just kind of go with the norm and see what's what's going on. Now, in reality, in this case, I chose select subject, but I really wanted to select the background because the background's my my bigger issue, right? So we're letting a stallion run free um, in an enclosed paddock. Um, and therefore we have fences to deal with and things like that but i can easily just take and invert that mask over here and so now my mask is the the selecting the background and not my horse i have just a touch of a problem here on the edge of the nose and the tip of the ear that i want to maybe adjust so what i want to do is subtract from that mask so you got to think about your mask again I have white reveals, black conceals, so my horse is not selected, my background is selected. I want to subtract from my background, and I want to subtract using a brush. Then what I'm going to do is just zoom in here a little bit. Command plus plus on my Mac, control plus plus on your, on your PC. I have a feather set up, but I really want a, a low feather on this one. I want full full flow, and I want my size to be just a little bit smaller so that I can just kind of make certain that, that the edge of this nose on this beautiful stallion does not get into the... Um, into that mask that we're putting on on the background so we're masking the background and you notice here that i can just hold the alt button and get that that brush to reverse itself just like we would in photoshop so I'm just kind of making certain that I have the horse's lips um, in this in this selection. And let's just go up here to the ear. So I'm holding my space bar and I'm kind of going up and just kind of refining this selection here. And you know, I'm probably going a little bit more detail than what I might necessarily need, however. Um, you know, in this case, in this case, um, not too bad. Um, here, I may want to just take my flow down. And, you know, we don't have the refined mass tools and things that we have in, in Photoshop, but I can just take and reduce my flow a little bit here so that I can get some of this detail in here without without going too much. Now I'm gonna be careful about how much I, I do of this and and you'll see, at least in my, I've never edited this image this way before, but I um, always like bringing things to you fresh and live and, and um, without 
without knowing exactly what's going to happen. So uh, one of my belief is, is that this, I have to be careful of this green, this green that's part of this main coming through and, and affecting what I'm going to do with my background. So I can always refine this a little bit later, but I know that back in here, I may want to hold my option and just add some of this to my mask so that my mask is um, a little bit more through here. All right. So let's go ahead and um, if we go back here, we can go to fit see our image and now what i wanted to, to do was experiment with this whole thought process of the fact that my mask is done and now i can make adjustments to that mask so what if i were to take the exposure of that background way down and i take the let's just turn this overlay off and let's turn the blacks down let's turn the whites down let's turn highlights down let's kind of take that whole background and make that whole background really 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 dark and um now now we have an issue of this um this main that we want to deal with right so if we go back to our brush and now we want to just add to this to this mask so i'm adding to this mask and what i'm going to do is with my brush active and come back up here so my brush tools are here i want to kind of just make certain that my i'm going to add a brush instead of subtracting a brush and I'm going to just kind of work in here, but I want to turn auto mask off and I'm going to just undo that last brush so that you can see the fact that I want to, um, I want to take and, and take my flow down and I want to auto mask off. And what I probably want to do is increase my feather a little bit. And again, I've never tried this particular image, so let's just see what we can do here to get rid of some of this green overcast from the background that's coming through the main and um, also some of some of it has to do with the reflections of those that green in the background coming through as well. So what I'm doing is just kind of painting away in here kind of casually. I could probably even get a bigger brush and kind of just work some of that green out. And now because the background has that I've taken the exposure way down, but there are some there are some highlights in there, right? So maybe if I bring the highlights up, it will keep that background um, here a little bit more in my face. The other thing that I can now just thinking about is that because it's green and it's a saturation, what if I were to desaturate that and um, and then come up in here and do the same thing here. So I'm taking and desaturating that green, keeping my highlights up now, and kind of working this. And so this was, an, uh, this was an image that I would never have considered doing this way in anything other than Photoshop in the past, because our masking tools just were not that good. Um, they just did not, could not handle this type of, of masking. And so I would have done this with a selected mask and, and done, done some crazy selections and, and um, really kind of worked to try to get this main in as much as possible. And as well as, um, you know, using some luminosity masks maybe to, um, it's going to go a little bit smaller here, 
some luminosity masks in here to take and and refine this a little bit more. But now all of a sudden, I'm, I'm able to create a pretty compelling image um, here in Lightroom that I would never have been able to do in Lightroom had, um, had this not been part of our, of our, um, you know, so you see this whole background here is actually just a, uh, this is part of the fence. I don't know that I'm looking at it here. So we're going to kind of work this a little bit more and darken this down. Wondering how the green got in there, but um, it's actually just kind of part of that fencing. I'm going to kind of just blend this a little bit, make this work, and then I'm going to feather this into the main just a touch. Make certain of my background, and I'm using a Wacom tablet as I do this. So, um, you know, if you don't have a Wacom tablet, you can certainly attempt to do this with a mouse, but maybe not have as good as effect. And um, let's just go back over here to fit, and let's just hide my masks here for a second, and. Um, where that image is looking pretty darn strong. So now I'm just gonna do a little bit of, of work on seeing if I can't, um, I'm gonna unlock this so that my crop stays big. And I just had a little bit too much leading line in there. I don't, I don't really wanna bring this all the way over to the point where, so if my, if, my, if I looked at my Fibonacci circle, I don't want necessarily to get it all the way over to this point. Um, not a bad choice, but I kind of like, I kind of like this long, long launch into, um, into this, this black space here. And so there I have it with, uh, with some masking done. And now let's just kind of go back up to my basic panel here again. And this is my, this is my overall um, adjustments on the image. So now I can adjust those overall images, just to add a touch more contrast here. Let's look at those highlights on, on that horse and let's bring some whites up. Now it's an all black stallion Frisians are, Frisians are this, this, super powerful black look to them. Um, and I kind of like that look altogether. Um, you know, could I go back down to effects and, you know, you see, I've already got a, a little bit of post crop vignette on there to darken it up in the background. And I think I am done with that image. Um, all done in Lightroom, and here is before. Whoops, let me just go to my. Let's see if I can do it before and after. Um, and because I'm, they changed my shortcut on me. So here's on import, and here is my postcard vignette, my final, my final image. And let's see now if I'm in there, I can go just using my, this is my backslash key, um, and in the develop module, just uh, the backslash key can show me before and afters. So I'm really liking that image. Um, I think it's much more powerful. Um, you know, we were able to get rid of all that background. Yes, we lost a little bit of the main detail up in here, but um, overall, not bad at all, considering this was a all done in Lightroom. Um, just amazing as far as I'm concerned. And if you'd like more information about some of our events that we're going to be doing in the Photo Guild, um, you can certainly come over to the um, website www.canamexpo.com.
um, dot com and then just forward slash photo guild or if you look at the top on the menu you'll see a photo guild tab it'll talk about the the weekly classes that are going to be running and competitions that we're going to be running and how the whole guild is is being set up so if you're interested at all in some of these editing techniques um, this is going to be uh, one of the things that we're going to be talking about on november 4th for our class on november 4th is the changes in Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, these are just some of them. The masking options are, are huge now in Lightroom and give us all kinds of capabilities. So hope you enjoyed this and have a great day.